Why, hello. What you doing on my deck? Are you saying I want some bird seeds? You have to go over to the bird seed feeder for that. <laughs> May the forest be with you. Ah, oh, that's so fun. This is the mug I got when we were at the Arboretum in Ann Arbor. And I am totally in love with it. It is huge. It fits like twice as much tea as normal. And I'm out of my peach tea. So this morning it is watermelon zinger. So I think it's like the watermelon berry zinger that we got back in summer. And then Chips got hooked on it. And I still hadn't tried it. Now I've tried it. And it's like really refreshing. It's kind of confusing because you drink it and you're like, yes, I taste the berry. And then like after a while, all of a sudden you're like, wow, I taste the cool watermelon. <gasps> we have a real watermelon too. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited about that. So Chips got us a real watermelon to share. Um, I'm not sure when he's going to want to crack that open, but I love watermelon, so that's going to be pretty fun. But yes, hello everyone. Welcome back. It is a beautiful day in my greenhouse as usual, and I have been looking into some really fun new additions for my greenhouse, as in like actual big aviaries that I might be able to put into my office. I'm kind of having office stage names about when we move now, but I know I have responsibilities before I can do office daydreams. I need to pay these off, <laughs> my student loans. Remember, every one of these stones is $100. <laughs> so I have a lot of work I still need to do, and that is why today I'm actually going to be resting and working as usual. Imagine that, like that's a big change in my daily routine. Man, that's a lot of, that's a lot of money. Every now and then when I think about buying something frivolous, I kind of pick this up and go, nope, you, you've got something to work on. And so it's a good little helpful reminder. I do really good with visual reminders like that. Kind of like I have my, my little ring, my little ring to remind me to always choose the greener path and do the good things in life. And how now I seem to be wearing this necklace, the Michigan Go Blue necklace nonstop to show my support for Darling, my wonderful boyfriend, and that he's gonna be beginning the PhD program in like three months. I'm actually pretty excited that we're moving in um, a month early before his school starts, cause that'll give us time to enjoy the town together. And it was really sweet, cause when we were there, I was like, oh, maybe we'll come by every couple months and have the French toast on Sundays, cause he's really against eating out normally. And then <laughs> it was funny, cause when we were on our walk yesterday, he was like, I know we're probably going to have weekly French toast because he wants weekly French toast too. So that's pretty funny. But of course, we'll kind of try to rein it in because of both finances and health. But man, that French toast is delicious. But yeah, anyway, babbling. Good morning, everyone. I hope you guys have projects to keep you busy today. I have already written up the script for the latest Warrior Cats episode on the main channel. Um, I got to record, as you guys know, a little bit of the like testing my DNA kit thing yesterday. Uh, it's still on the table. We're going to ship it off at the post office when I go to pick up the mail. So snail mail gets picked up tomorrow, which means I get to have that awesome experience of it kind of being like Christmas and excitement all at one to see what people have sent in. It's really sweet and thank you guys to those of you who have suggested reading old snail mail on future kitten days right now I'm doing pretty good um, it doesn't seem like I'm being able to meet my video goal unfortunately I only seem to be managing to hit about seven videos a day which is like about uh, I mean I said seven videos was my goal like 7.3 videos is how many I need to do every day to reach 4,000 videos on the main channel before we move but it's kind of hard to get there because some of them, like this Warrior Cats episode, it took me about half an hour, 40 minutes to just write. Like there's lots and lots. Like this is just one page of the reading that I do, the voiceover that I do for the intro to that episode. And I want to start doing that more in my Sim series as well because you guys, that's where it started. Okay, so that's probably what I want to talk about this morning just real briefly out of all of the plethora of things I could talk about is how much I love those stories and how much you should value the stories that you create. And I mean that because I really love telling stories in Sims. I love I, all of my Sims 2, you can see in the bookshelf right behind us. I loved Sims 2. For me, it was um, in a world where my life was pretty chaotic and it was very hard growing up with my parents being sick and not having enough money to see like food on the table all of the time. Um, just everything was outside of my control. Couldn't control my mom's depression. I couldn't control like my dad and mom's health. I couldn't control that my 
little brothers needed so much extra help because of their autism. I couldn't control so many things in my life that to, even at that age, I couldn't control keeping the electricity on like consistently. Thankfully, there's laws in place where like my parents were showing that they were doing the best with what they had and we had young children in the house. So usually we got to keep the water and electricity on no matter how hard things got. Um, especially because like Missouri is really particular about you have to show that you're at least trying really hard and my parents always were. We just got the really short end of some genetic sticks, which is why I did the genetic testing. But point being, life was out of control for me when I was a teenager growing up. And so Sims 2 was a way where I could make my families happy. A lot of people on the main channel have commented at just how much I really take care of my Sims. And I try to develop them fully as characters and try to see like to their wants and try to let them have all sorts of dreams that they get to have met. And it's not just like controlling a couple little pixel people on a screen to me. It's a lot deeper than that. And that's where it comes from, is back when I was younger and I just really had my whole life spin out of control, how much I needed to be able to make someone happy. And you can't make someone with a chronic disease or depression happy. You can't make anyone happy, period. And when things are just that out of control in like other people's lives who you love, it was such a relief for me to be able to be like, oh, I made my sim happy. Good, they're in platinum. Good, this happened. But it also, as time went on, became a great medium for being able to explore the unhappy times too. For being able to make characters who something really sad happened in their life or they had a personality trait that wasn't entirely positive and watching them still develop into like really rich, full characters who led rewarding lives, even if they weren't like maxed out on their skills, even if they didn't have like a platinum grave when they died of old age or something like that. Knowing that their story had had like growth, knowing their story had had a period of richness in their lives, that became the challenge for me. It wasn't getting perfect skills. It wasn't reaching the top of a career track. I actually got to the point where I would start like capping where a sim would go. I'd be like, no, this sim doesn't have the ambition to go beyond being a high school teacher. They they don't want to become the principal. They don't want to become the board of director, like an education in my little sim's world. I would cap their careers. I would uh, decide even if the sim wants to have more kids, maybe their struggle is that they can't have more kids. And that sounds really silly, but by making the more complicated stories in my sim's world that way, I could explore the more complicated issues in my life from a safe like kind of objective environment and then I could even start thinking of ways where those more complicated difficult things that the the sims characters were dealing with could try to change their lives and then I could also see the way the game would just change their lives on its own for me and it kind of made me feel calmer with my life and it made me feel really good whenever I was at my worst and thinking like I'm never going to become a better person Playing Sims and being able to watch my Sims develop from being like the little starting character into developing their skills because they sat down and read a book for a long time or I want the sim to like maybe lose some weight so I would send her out jogging or I want this sim to like be able to have their social needs filled so I would find ways for that to happen by initiating friendships initiating going out to eat together with their friend those things in a sideways manner really helped me bring better life skills into my life because you can see the cause and effect so clearly in that little micro environment of The Sims. And so that's why I love The Sims very, very deeply. And that's why I love telling the stories so well. And in a roundabout way, that's why I look at this and it's worth all of the work to write all of this up. And this in particular is for the Warrior series. So that's something totally different for the main channel. But I'm going to start trying to bring in kind of like these role play moments where I will have like five minutes at most, hopefully, <laughs> of voiceover explaining the character's thoughts, explaining their current life situation, explaining where they want to go and the current conundrum, the current hurdle that they're facing because I think that's really the thing is that everyone is facing something in their lives. If you walk up to somebody and you go, what's going, like what problem do you have? What hurdle are you facing in life? They're going to have an answer no matter what's happening because there's life's always changing. You can be totally rich and successful and the thing is you have to 
keep that up. It's not like that's just a state you reach and you stay there permanently. You have to work hard to like keep your wealth or keep your success or maybe that person would be like, yeah, man, externally it looks like I've got all these things going for me, but I really wish I could paint more often. Like everybody has something that keeps them busy, something that they might view as a hurdle, but something that can keep them going. A, a next project. Everyone has another project ahead of them. And I love that. I really do. So I'm going to try to portray that a little bit more for my sim stories because who knows maybe being able to see those stories and there's a beautiful cardinal female ah, and she flies away before I can get a picture of her but maybe being able to portray those stories for people will be a good medium to think deeper on their own lives and the way that they can better their lives so I don't know there's my ramble on why I love the sims and how it helped to change my life but I'm thinking I'll start doing those more often because I don't really see a lot of people stop and talk about like video games in a serious way where it can be like any other form of media any other form of how you spend your time no matter what it is where there's significant impacts in your life and for me it's sims and it's being able to tell stories see the world from a bit of a more objective but still very compassionate standpoint and then turn around and look at my life a little bit more objectively but still compassionate just like I do with my sims and figure out how I can make things better. So, and you can hear baby cheap in the background. So yeah, I'll probably talk about those things more in the future because it's just, I don't personally think there's that culture of like looking down on video games anymore. Um, I run into it now and then and I'm totally baffled because to me it's like looking down on someone who enjoys like art or reading or, or like a sport. It's just a different way to spend your time. We have watermelon now. It is that time of year, finally, and Chips just finished cutting up the watermelon that was in the fridge and serving it up nice and cold, so I thought I'd come and sit out on the deck and enjoy some of the beautiful greenery that's out here. It's getting a little bit warmer here in North Carolina, so in the afternoon the birds are a lot quieter. They don't come out as much to feed. They're normally snoozing in the branches if you happen to catch them. I am so happy that my new office is going to still be up high so I can look out and just see all the trees and the greenery and I plan on putting so many bird feeders on the deck. I'm going to put them on the window of my office on the second story. It's going to be amazing. I cannot wait to really create that office space with you guys. That's going to be very, very exciting because it, it'll be kind of like a physical representation of how you guys can look in and you can see how my life physically and like the physical world, I don't want to say the real world because to me the internet is part of the real world, um, but you can see how in the physical world you guys have affected my life and how there's going to be your art everywhere and there's going to be the birds, I'm hoping to get them. In the future, this is like big daydreams, like after I pay off my loans and have so much in savings and yada 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 kind of daydreams. In the future, I would love to get the birds like a really nice aviary. Um, not too like extreme of one because we're still just going to be renting, but just some nice like double, double cages, like double width flight cages that they can enjoy. And then I can have bookshelves with all of your art and the scrapbooks I have of the fan art in there. That would be so wonderful. But I was thinking today how earlier we were talking about um, how video games affect like our lives and that it's not like this is just a segmented thing. It's not like it's an embarrassing thing. It's not like it's a thing that only happens occasionally or like for some people. For a lot of people, they're like a daily part of life like walking is or like reading a book is or skills in general are. And it's nothing to be ashamed of. I, I really think it's so interesting to me how many of the YouTubers I know who are embarrassed to talk about what they do. And I guess I'm not because I view it as storytelling. And so that's what I was thinking about sitting here on the deck. I was like, oh, let's just have a nice contemplative moment eating my watermelon. And the next thing you know, I'm suddenly thinking about like, wow, you know, I was talking about how video games and video game culture and online culture kind of are becoming uh, the landscape for a lot of people's daily lives and then it hit me I get like 2 million views on the main channel a month and suddenly I realized oh My stuff might be some of the landscape of people's daily lives especially on the vlog channel And that was very interesting because it's kind of surreal to think about the things that you do and create going out there and then becoming part of someone's lives and it made me think about how what I want to do the most with both my channels is bring the whole of myself to you guys to be able to learn about and understand, but then also bring forward 
something better, so encouragement to make the world better, to, to help your heart heal, encouragement to take better care of the environment, uh, lessons, evidence. You guys can see how I take bags to the grocery store every single time. Chips and I use reusable bags. We live happy as vegans who now have learned we can travel even to Ann Arbor and be very, very happy vegans. All of those ways, just the appreciation even, even something that small of just being out here and sharing, hey, look at me, I'm enjoying delicious watermelon sitting on deck and it's not, the to me, this is not showing off like, look at my decadent time sitting on the deck. <laughs> That's kind of a pun, isn't it? It's showing and sharing with you guys how I am a person who is able to find fulfillment and joy and gratitude because I am surrounded by greenery and I am taking a moment out of my day to appreciate that. So that's what I'm trying to share with you guys, not just what I physically as me am doing. I'm trying to share the experience with you of being able to appreciate this world and take part in it more. And so I don't know how my videos, it's so weird to say it like that, I don't know how my videos might like affect your guys' lives. I don't know how my videos would give you the, the kind of like cultural landscapes that help you walk through like the landmarks that you walk through your day. But I hope whatever it is, it can give you company or a smile or new ideas or new ways of looking at life. And I'm really grateful that you've invited me in to being like a, a daily landmark in your life or, or week or whatever it is. So thank you guys. And I'll do my best to take that very seriously and try to grow as a person so that I can I can share more good stuff with you guys and I think it's really interesting what we're doing is very interesting because you get to see me in my earliest stages and all my flaws you get to see me with all of my struggles health and personal and all of the things I'm trying to accomplish and if I fail or if I succeed that'll be kind of just something that affects my life, but the journey of it and being able to watch me go on that journey, I hope will give you guys some insight into your own lives. So I'm going to stop rambling about that. Apparently watermelon makes me extremely like deep and thoughtful and I'm going to enjoy this because I need to go back inside soon and continue work. I actually have uploaded the 3500th video on the channel and it was Horse Haven of all things today. I didn't even notice and then I went to check and I was like, oh, I did it! So 3500 videos are now on the main channel. I'm going to have to celebrate somehow this weekend and I will like, I tend to celebrate the 500 milestones and also I'll make a special like community update vlog and I'm getting ready for summer and there's just so many things. I want to do. I'm so excited. Now that I finished Warrior Cats for the day, which was awesome, I'm going to either work on more Warrior Cats for later in the week or work on zoo crafting or maybe reward myself by trying out a new game and just have fun. So, oh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. But whatever it is, I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is whatever I do and whatever it is, I hope that what I share with you guys in the future might be like that really nice tree that you walk by on your way to work or school every day or it might be like that person's yard that's just overflowing with flowers all the time and they're a friendly like a kind of eccentric old woman who just waves from her yard at you and maybe has a tray of cookies now and then i hope whatever i am in the daily landscape of your guys lives it can be something that awesome and that's what i'll strive to be so it's really fun we build each other's lives together digitally, just like we do with people who we see physically. And I think if we kind of could close our eyes and imagine it all like walking a neighborhood and when you walk from like channel to channel to watch different things or check on your email or jump on Facebook to see how your family's doing, Facebook would be like a cafe where sometimes there's people fighting and sometimes there's interesting things you stumble on and sometimes there's embarrassing like family photo albums laying out in the open for everyone to see. And everybody's houses, like how they present themselves online, would be like bumping into them in the street. And I kind of like that mental image because I really hope that my digital home would just look like greenery and flowers and beauty. And that's kind of why I redid the vlog artwork yesterday. I really like how the vlog channel artwork turned out. Let me know what you guys think of it. It's just a simple banner of the peony that we saw at the Arboretum. But... I hope I can bring greenery in all forms, digital and physical, to you guys, so. <sighs> I'm going to savor this and then get back to work and 
I'll see what other little adventures we have planned for the day. And if not, we have something very amazing that's going to be happening tomorrow that I'm going to keep quiet on because it's really exciting. And when it happens tomorrow, then I'll share that with you guys. So more adventures incoming, guys. And I hope you're all having a wonderful day.